In this video, we're gonna talk about three stocks that are on our watch list for the MacroOps portfolio. And you know MacroOps is our global macro research and consulting firm. Now, a few warnings because I know there's a lot of these three stock videos. These three stocks that we're looking at are micro caps. They have a very small market capitalization and there are very few shares traded. Some of them are even foreign stocks. And also consider that we are in a bear market. So if your first question is, well, why are you even buying stocks right now? The answer is that we may put small little starter positions into these stocks, but we're very well aware of the general macro environment. It's not the best time to buy stocks, but that doesn't mean that you stop your research. These might be stocks that you put on a watch list too. It's really going to depend on your strategy. All I'm saying is be careful. Don't be stupid. And if you've been watching our videos, you know we're moving into a very different macro environment than the one we've been in for the past 40 years. And in this type of environment, these off the beaten path type stocks, these are where you can make a lot of money. The buy and hold index investing, throwing everything into an ETF, that's not going to work so well anymore. It's going to be a stock picker's market. So we might as well start looking at our targets now. First stock we're going to talk about is Philly Shipyard, ticker symbol PHLY. So Philly operates as a commercial shipyard that builds and repairs vessels for the United States Jones Act market and government. The company owns a shipbuilding facility which provides ocean-going merchant vessels including container ships, product tankers, and Aframax tankers. So what we like about Philly, they are highly illiquid. They only have an average trading volume of 5,500 shares. That's a 30,000 daily trading volume. But again, remember this highly illiquid nature of this stock, it's a double-edged sword. So it can be a good thing because it only needs a little bit of buying pressure to really rocket the price up, but it could be a bad thing too because, well, the same thing can happen on the downside. So that's why you gotta be careful with this. Right now they have a $1.2 billion order backlog and their final delivery is scheduled for 2024. They also have 101 million in net cash on their balance sheet. So right now they're actually currently trading below net cash. Another thing about these stocks that we're going over is they're beaten down. So the research we're looking at right now is from our value analyst, Brandon. And you know how value works, right? You're looking for those beaten down stocks that are not being analyzed properly by the market. So, and you're trying to get in so that when it gets properly valued, you make all the money. So this is one of those beautiful value deals where a stock is trading below its net cash. That's textbook undervalued. But for a lot of stocks when they're doing that, that's how bad their outlook is, that the market isn't even valuing them at what they have on their balance sheet, which is why you can't blindly use that. You gotta actually understand the company like we do here. In this case, it's undervalued. In other cases, maybe not so much. So the company generated a positive EBITDA in quarter one of 2022 of 900,000 and a positive net income of 3.5 million. Now what we don't like about this stock is that revenues and earnings are highly volatile based on customer advances or deposits. So any reduction in customer advances during a quarter would result in a significant cash burn as the company still must finance their current operations. So it's pretty volatile. And the company only has two more years of backlog left before it needs new work. And currently it's uncertain if they'll get those new contracts. So there's kind of a melting ice cube element with this company's net cash position, even though it's strong. These type of cyclical businesses have the boom bust revenue and earnings cycles, which is nice when things are good, but then really bad when things are bad. But the big kicker that we like and the story that we like about this company is thinking about how strategic this company is going to be once China's naval strength exceeds America's, which is already happening. And then we kick it into high gear. This stock could really benefit from that. Next stock we're looking at is First Helium, ticker symbol H-E-L-I. So this is a Canadian company developing helium production to meet growing demand in the high-tech global market. And the company is actually positioned to become a leading North American producer of helium, leveraging a de-risk strategy to achieve near-term cash flow. They recently raised $12 million to develop its Worsley Helium project, anchored by its successful helium discovery well. So helium, it's a finite resource with increasing global demand. It's also really tough to trap and store helium because of its lack of density. It quickly rises and dissipates into the atmosphere. That's why we put it in the balloons. Now, U.S. helium production is actually expected to decline over the next decade, leaving Canada as the next and potential only North American helium producer. So this company would really benefit off of that. And the company's latest well project has the potential to generate helium and cash flow from 2023 to 2030. And the company owns 100% of this project, which is great. If we look at their management team and the founder, they collectively own 20% of the company. So their interests are really aligned. You always wanna see that in a management team. You wanna make sure they have stakes in the company that they're investing in it as well. So we got that in this case. The company also generates high return on investments at varying helium spot prices. Now, what we don't 
don't like about the company is that it's a commodity linked business. So the commodity spot prices basically determine, you know, how it's going to perform. You need those higher prices for helium. Helium is also very easily lost into the atmosphere. So there's significant risk that they lose a lot of the helium from this well before they're able to store it. And we're also still unsure of how much of this giant wells, 76,000 acres, is actually viable for helium production. The company could sustain heavy losses if helium volumes come in lower than expected. But overall, the company is very undervalued and we're keeping it on our watch list. Next stock is BM Technology. Technologies, ticker symbol BMTX. So BMTX is a digital banking platform that employs a multi-partner distribution model. They basically do banking as a service. So that helps them acquire customers at very high volumes with very low expenses compared to traditional banks. And that's as they provide all the benefits to their customers, partners, and businesses. So BMTX is an off the beaten path stock that most investors overlook. And that's because it's a FinTech company, you know, which is not popular right now. It's also a former SPAC, if you remember that buzzword. And it trades for less than $100 million. The fact that everyone hates it makes it more attractive to us. The company has over 2 billion in customer deposits and it operates in three unique business segments. We got the higher education banking, the banking as a service, and the niche direct to consumer. Now the two most interesting segments are the higher education banking and the banking as a service. So BMTX is basically connected with over 750 college campuses because they're the ones distributing financial aid funds while offering those students banking access. They're able to plug in with the university and reduce their processing costs by $125,000 a year. It's pretty cool because they're banking as a service, right? So they basically allow companies to quickly create banking products through them within their existing business. So for example, T-Mobile uses this company, BMTX, to provide T-Mobile money to its customers. They basically white label BMTX. And BMTX is able to provide these services at a fraction of the cost it would take for these companies to create it themselves. They're really just plug and play, which is perfect. They generate around 30% EBITDA margins and they've had a positive cash flow since 2019. The company acquires banking customers for around $10, making it one of the cheapest acquirers in the space along with Square. And also the founder CEO owns 7% of the company, which again, we always like to see, right? One thing we don't like about BMTX though is that there is potential nepotism at the CEO level because the current CEO is just the daughter of the parent company of BMTX's spinoff. So that might not be good. FinTech is also a highly crowded space. It's hard to tell who's going to win and why they win. And BMTX has to compete with many different companies, Chime, Green Dot, Square, SoFi, and traditional banks too, like TD Bank and Wells Fargo. Now we don't think becoming a chartered bank is the right play for this company because it increases their competition and their future capital requirements. Chartered banks got a whole more capital on their balance sheet for loans and stuff. What we'd rather have them do is focus on their banking as a service, which has been working great, and their higher ed business. That way they stay out of the way of the bigger players too. The company is very cheap and not only that, but they are a potential takeover target for a larger player like Square or a legacy bank looking to expand into the fintech space. So there's definitely good potential there. And there you have it, three more names that you could add to your watch list. But remember, just be careful. You know what type of environment we're in, and you also know that these are micro cap stocks. They're a liquid, which could be a good thing, but if you play it wrong, it turns into a bad thing. And if you're itching to buy stocks and you're wondering how long this recession and bear market is gonna last, click this video right here. We go over a lot of interesting stats of previous bear markets and how long we think this bear market is gonna last. So click this video right here and I'll see you there.